Hello, this is Janice Phelps Williams, and today I'm going to show you how I created this oil pastel drawing of a landscape in Harbor Springs, Michigan. I like to use white paper made especially for oil pastels. It's called pastel board. Unlike soft pastels, oil pastels do not generate dust. I begin by deciding where to put the horizon line. Usually that is just above or below the middle of the paper. Sometimes I work in plain air, which means outdoors directly from nature. At other times I work from photographs or from memory. On this day I am working indoors using a photograph for reference, but I don't intend my drawing to be an exact replica of the photograph. Even though I tend to rub the pastels with my fingers, I can wash up with dish soap, warm water, and a nail brush. Unlike oil paints, I do not need to use turpentine or solvents. After putting in the horizon line and some distant hills, I block in the green grass in the foreground and begin to put in some shapes for the trees and other vegetation that will be in the foreground and in the middle ground. I love clouds, I love the blue sky, I love the very subtle shading within the cloud shapes. So I begin looking at the negative space around the clouds, which is the, the sky, and putting that in. And then subtly I can start to put in the shadows. Now the very first thing I did when I started this drawing was I put white oil pastel on the white paper where I knew I would want to put the clouds. This way it made it a little easier when I put the blue in because the softness of the oil pastel, the white oil pastel which was already there, blends in with the blue. And now I'm adding in some very light gray. You want to be very careful not to, to go too dark with any of your colors. You can always go darker, but it's a little harder to go lighter when you're working with oil pastels. So I very gently put in some very light blue-gray shadowing for these clouds have some shadowing in them. It, it's blue, it's even a little touch of pink in there, and so I'm having a lot of fun putting these in, and it, it really is something that I enjoy. One thing that you will notice as you study clouds, as you photograph them, or draw them, or just simply look at them, the clouds that are nearest to you are of course going to appear bigger, and then as they recede towards the horizon line they're going to appear smaller, but they don't just appear larger and smaller, they also appear closer to each other as they get closer to the horizon line. So by putting in the clouds in the shadows in more detail towards the horizon line, you're getting that sense of distance that you want to have in your drawing. And now I'm going to start filling in the detail of the greens in the foreground and the middle ground. What I want to do is look carefully at the greens and see what the shades are within the actual plants themselves and trees themselves, and what are the shades that are dependent upon the light on that particular day, and what the shadows are, uh, and look at all of these things, and I found that it's only by practice and continually observing nature that you're able to develop an awareness and sensitivity to these shades, and then that will translate into your artwork. You want to keep in mind that the more detail you can put in the foreground, the more sense of perspective and distance you're going to give to your painting. 
Next, I'm going to take a sharpened wooden tool to scrape off the top layer of oil pastel and reveal some of the lighter colors underneath. And here's the final picture, an oil pastel of the beautiful landscape surrounding Harbor Springs, Michigan. Thank you for joining me today as we explore oil pastels. You can find my work on Facebook at JaniceFelpsWilliams.paintings or you can visit my website JaniceFelpsWilliams.com. Thank you.